Warriors Into the Wild, Chapter 3. That morning, as Rusty slipped off his night's wanderings, the mouse dream came again, even more vivid than before. Free of his collar, beneath the moon, he stalked a timid creature, but this time he was aware of being watched. Shining from the shadows of the forest, he saw dozens of yellow eyes. The clan cats had entered his dream world. Rusty woke, bleeding the bright sunshine that was streaming across the kitchen floor. His fur fell heavy and thick with warmth. His food bowl had been topped up and his water bowl rinsed out and filled with bitter tasting too like water. Rusty preferred drinking from puddles outside, but when it was hot or he was very thirsty, he had to admit it was easier to lap up the water indoors. Could he really abandon this comfortable life? He ate, then pushed his way out of a cat flap into the garden. The day had promised to be warm, and the garden was heavy with the smell of early blossoms. Hello, Rusty. He heard a voice from the fence. It was Smudge. You should have been awake an hour ago. The baby sparrows were stretching out their wings. Did you catch any? Rusty asked. Smudge yawned and licked his nose. Eh, couldn't be bothered. I'd already eaten enough at home. Anyways, why weren't you out earlier? Yesterday you are complaining about Henry sleeping his time away, and today you're not much better yourself. Rusty sat down on the cool herb beside the fence and curled his tail neatly over his front paws. I was in the woods last night. He reminded his friend, and once he felt the blood stir in his veins and his fur stiffen, Smudge looked down at him, his eyes wide. Oh, yes, I forgot. How was it? Did you catch anything, or did anything catch you? Rusty paused, not sure how to tell his old friend what had happened. I met some wildcats. He began. What? Smudge was clearly shocked. D did you get into a fight? Sort of. Rusty could feel the energy surging through his body again as he recalled the strength and power of the clan cat. Were you hurt? What happened? Smudge prompted him eagerly. There were three of them, bigger and stronger than any of us. And you fought all three of them? Smudge interrupted, his tail twitching with excitement. No! Rusty mewed hastily. Just the youngest one. The other two cats came later. How come they didn't shred you to pieces? They warned me to leave their territory, but then... Rusty hesitated. What? Mewed Smudge impatiently. They asked me to join their clan. Smudge's whiskers quivered disbelievingly. They did! Rusty insisted. Why would they do that? I don't know. Rusty admitted. I think they need extra paws in their clan. Uh, sounds a bit odd to me. Smudge mewed doubtfully. I wouldn't trust them if I were you. Rusty looked at Smudge. His black and white friend had never shown any interest in venturing into the woods. He was perfectly content living with his housefolk. He would never understand the restless longing that Rusty's dreams stirred in night after night. But I do trust them. Rusty purred softly. And I've made up my mind. I'm going to join them. Smudge scrambled down from the fence and stood in front of Rusty. Please don't go, Rusty! He mewed in alarm. I might never see you again! Rusty nudged him affectionately with his head. Don't worry, my housewife will get a never cat. You'll get along with him fine. You'll get along with everyone. But it won't be the same! Smudge will. Rusty twitched his tail impatiently. That's just the point. If I stay around here, they'll take me to the cutter, and I won't be the same either. Smudge looked puzzled. <laughs> the cutter? He echoed. The vet. Rusty explained. To be... altered. Like Henry was. Smudge shrugged and stared down at his paws. But Henry's alright. He mumbled. I mean, I know he's a bit lazier now, but he's not unhappy. We could still have fun. Rusty felt his heart fill of sadness at the thought of leaving his friend. I'm sorry, Smudge. I'll miss you, but I have to go. Smudge didn't reply, but stepped forward and gently touched Rusty's nose with his own. Fair enough. I see I can't stop you. But let's at least spend one more morning together. Rusty found himself enjoying the morning even more than usual, visiting his old haunts with Smudge, sharing words with the cats he had grown up with. Every one of his senses felt supercharged, as if he were poised before a huge jump. As Sunhai approached, Rusty grew more and more impatient to see if Lionheart would really should be waiting for him. The idle buzz and meows from his old friends seemed to fade into the background as all his senses strained toward the woods. Rusty jumped down from his garden fence for the last time and crept into the woods. He had said his goodbyes to Smudge, and now all his thoughts were focused on the forest and the cats who lived in it.
As he approached the spot where he had met with the clan cats the night before, he sat down and tasted the airs. Tall trees shielded the ground from the midday sunshine, making it comfortably cool. Here and there, a patch of sunlight shone through the gap in the leaves and lit up the forest floor. Rusty could smell the same cat scent as last night, but he had no idea whether it was old or new. He lifted his head and sniffed it uncertainly. You have a lot to learn, mewed a deep voice. Even the tiniest clan kit knows when another cat is nearby. Rusty saw a pair of green eyes looking from beneath a bramble bush. Now he recognized the scent. It was Lionheart. Can you tell if I am alone? Asked a golden tabby, stepping into the light. Hastily, Rusty sniffed again. The scent of Blue Star and Grey Paw were still there, but not as strong as the previous night. Hesitantly, he mewed. Blue Star and Grey Paw are with you this time? That's right! Mewed Lionheart. But someone else is. Rusty stiffened as a second clan cat strode into the clearing. This is Whitestorm. Purred Lionheart. One of ThunderClan's senior warriors. Rusty looked at the tall and felt his spine tinkle of cold fear. Was this a trap? Long body and muscular, Whitestorm stood in front of Rusty and gazed down at him. His white coat was thick and unmarked, and his eyes were yellow of sun baked sand. Rusty flattened his ears warily and tensed his muscles in preparation to fight. Relax before your fear scent brings unwanted attention, growled Lionheart. We are here only to take you to our camp. Rusty sat very still, hardly daring to breathe, as Whitestorm stretched his nose forward and gave him a curious sniff. Hello, young one, murmured the white cat. I've heard a lot about you. Rusty dipped his head in greeting. Come, we can speak more once we are in the camp. Heard Lionheart, and without pausing, he and Whitestorm leaped the way into the undergrowth. Rusty jumped to his paws and followed as quickly as he could. The two warriors made no losses for Rusty as they sped through the forest, and before long he was struggling to keep up. Their pace barely slowed as they led him over fallen trees that they cleared in a single leap, but which Rusty had to scramble over paw by paw. They passed through sharply fragrant pine trees where they had to jump across deep gullies churned up by two legged tree eaters. From the safety of his garden fence, Rusty had often heard it roaring and snarling in the distance. One gully was too wide to jump, half filled with slimy, fouling, smelling water. The clan cats waited through without hesitating. Rusty had never put a paw in water before, but he was determined not to show any signs of weakness, so he narrowed his eyes and followed, trying to ignore the uncomfortable wetness that soaked his belly fur. At last, Lionheart and Whitestorm paused. Rusty skidded to a halt behind them and stood panting while the two warriors stepped in onto a rock that rested on the edge of a small ravine. We are very close to our camp now. Me and Lionheart, Rusty is trying to see any signs of life. Moving leaves, a glimpse of fur among the bushes below, but his eyes saw nothing except the same undergrowth that covered the rest of the forest floor. Use your nose. You must be able to scent it. His twice storm impatiently, Rusty closed his eyes and sniffed. Whitestorm was right. The scents here were very different from the cat scent he was used to. The air smelled stronger, speaking of many, many different cats. He nodded thoughtfully and announced, I can smell cats. Lionheart and Whitestorm exchanged amused looks. There will come a time if you are accepted into the clan when you will know each cat scent by name. Lionheart meowed. Follow me. He led the way, nimbling down the boulders to the bottom of the ravine, and pushed his way through the thick patch of gorse. Rusty followed, and Whitestorm took up the rear. As his side scraped into the prickly gorse, Rusty looked down and noticed that the grass beneath his paws was flattened to a broad, strong-smelling track. This must be the main entrance into the camp, he thought. Beyond the gorse, the clearing opened up. The ground center was bare, hard earth shaped by many generations of paw steps. This camp had been here a long time. The clearing was dappled by sunshine, and th the air felt warm and still. Rusty looked around, his eyes wide. There were cats everywhere, sitting alone or in groups, sharing food and purring quietly as they groomed one another. Just after sun high, when the day is hottest, is the time for sharing tongues. My heart explained. Sharing tongues? Rusty echoed. Clan cats always spend time grooming each other and sharing news of the day. White Storm told him. We call it sharing tongues. It is a custom that binds the members of the clan together. 
The cat had obviously smelled Rusty's foreign scent, for her heads began to turn and stare curiously in his direction. Suddenly, shy of meeting of any cat's gaze directly, Rusty looked around the clearing. It was edged with thick grass, dotted with tree stumps and a fallen tree. A thick current of ferns and gorse shielded the camp from the rest of the woods. Over there, beyond my heart, flicking his tail toward an unpronounceable looking tingle of brambles, is the nursery where the kits are cared for. Rusty swelled his ears toward the bushes. He couldn't see for the knot of prickly branches, but he could hear the mewing of several kittens from somewhere inside. As he watched, a ginger she catch squirmed through a small gap in the front. That, that must, be, must one be, be one of the queens. Rusty far, a tabby queen with distinctive black markings appeared around the bramble bush. The two she cats exchanged a friendly look between the ears before the tabby slipped inside the nursery, murmuring to the squealing kits. All cats serve the clan. Loyalty to the clan is the first law in our warrior code. A lesson you must learn quickly if you wish to stay with us. Here comes Blue Star. Beyond White Storm, sniffing the air, Rusty sniffed the air too. It was pleased that he was able to recognize the scent of the gray she-cat a moment before she appeared from the shadow of a large boulder that lay beside them at the head of the clearing. He came! Blue Star purred, addressing the warriors. White Storm replied. Lionheart was convinced he would not. Rusty noticed the tip of Blue Star's tail twitch impatiently. Well, what do you think of him? She asked. He kept up well on the return journey, despite his puny size. White Star admitted. He certainly seems strong for a kitty pet. So, it is agreed? Luzar looked at Lionheart and White Storm. Both cats nodded. Then I shall announce his arrival to the clan. Blue Star leaped onto the boulder and yelled, Let all those cats old enough to catch their own prey join here beneath the high rock for a clan meeting. Her clear call brought all the clan cats trying toward her, emerging like look of shadows from the edges of the clearing. Rusty stayed where he was, flanked by Lionheart and White Storm. The other cats settled themselves below the high rock and looked expectantly up at their leader. Rusty felt a rush relief as he recognized Grandpa's thick gray fur among the cats. Both beside him sat a young torso queen, her black tipped tail tucked neatly over small white paws. A large gray tabby crouched behind them, the black stripes on his fur looking like shadows on a moonlit forest floor. When the cats were still, Blue Star spoke. Thunderclaw needs more warriors, she began. Never before we had so few apprentices in training. It has been decided that Thunderclan will take in an outsider to train as a warrior. 